Hello. This recording is a second in a series of demonstrations that show how release automation can be integrated with Docker. Uh, in the first video, I showed you how uh, we could dynamically provision a container as part of a deployment. And if a deployment succeeded, we could then dynamically deprovision that container. So today what I'd like to show you is how we actually built that demonstration. So at first I'm going to switch to my Docker system. So as you can see, if I click on the images tab here, these are the images that are created on the Docker server. Uh, and this one here, the Apache server v1, um, that, that's the image that we use for most of the deployments. So if I now go to my release op operations center, so again, as in the first demonstration, this is the dashboard and to show you the actual process flows, we're going to go into the designer view and look at the process design. This is the application that we're using and in the general folder here, in the flows, what we have is uh, a provision environment and a deprovision environment flows. So we'll start with the provision. Now during the demonstration I showed this and basically there are um, four steps. So the first step is this, which is create the container. The second step is then to start that container we just created. We then have a, a registration of the agent. And then once the agents are registered, we can then assign them to the relevant environments. So we're going to start with the create step here. So this is a standard action. If you download the Docker action pack and install it, uh, these actions will be there. So this first one is create a container. And the first couple of um, variables here are the server and the port. Uh, we've used parameters, so you set it once and use it many times. We then set the host name. So this is the host name that's going to be used for that container. And what we're using is a parameter, which is taken from Jenkins. So that's the build number and just putting a, a prefix on the end of dash web because it's the web server. We can then set various other values. So as you can see here, uh, memory settings, uh, we can do things like the port binding. So in this case, we're binding the port 80 on the container to the host, which is 86. We also set environment values. We can change the entry point. You can see here, this is where we actually choose the image we want to build. So this is the image I just showed you in Docker. So we're using that image to build this container. And also the name, again, we're using the, the details from Jenkins and we're prefixing it with the dash web to show it's a web server. So when we run this action, we'll create this container. And then the next step when that completes, uh, we have a start container. So this is again, very simple. Again, we're passing the, the server and the port for the Docker server we're using. And all we have to do is then give it the name of the container we want to start. So we're taking the same details from that first step to then uh, say start this container. So at this point within Docker, the container is created and started. Now within the actual Docker image that we've used, uh, we've already installed the release automation agent. And as part of the, the creation of that container, we actually then configure the agent with the host name. So the host name that we've just passed through is then configured with the agent. Uh, the agent will start and then obviously register. So the next step is then waiting for that registration to complete. And as soon as that's done, we then assign this to the relevant environment. So in this case, we're assigning the database agents to the environment. So here we're just setting the username to use, the password, the application that we're targeting. Uh, the environment is the environment name taken for the deployment. So when we actually run this deployment, this is the environment name that will be used, we're passed into this. Then the server type. So which server type to assign this agent to? And then finally, uh, the actual name of the server we want to add. So in this case, again, we're just using the parameters we used earlier before. And we have an action for each of these, the database, uh, the middleware server, and the web server. So that's the steps we use for the actual provisioning. If I go to the deprovisioning, uh, it's very simple. All we're doing is we're stopping. So literally this first action is stop. And all we're doing is stop the database container. And then the next one is delete. So uh, at the end, we're going to stop and remove. And you can see we've got some overrides here, so we can force to kill. And also, do you want to remove the volume? So you can choose to actually remove the container, but leave the volumes in, in place. So that's the two flows that we used. Uh, those are obviously then put into processes. Now, obviously, what we've done here is the basics. If I go to our actions, uh, there are many other Docker actions that can be used. So I'm going to click on the actions here. So this is the action tree. And like I said, when you've actually downloaded and installed the action pack, these will be available. So these are the actions that we have. So 
as you can see on the top here we have the trade container which we just showed you uh, but also we can do export and import uh, we can inspect kill list start stop restart uh, all the actions you'd expect we can also work with the images so create the images look at the images on a machine and also at the very bottom here you can work with the repositories so you can build out a much broader um, range of actions and flows to work with your docker environment uh, i hope this is useful thank you for your time thanks bye